Hello, my name is Lynn Gillespie, and I will be your guide to discover the 12 high-performance garden characteristics with weekly training videos. A high-performance garden is one of the most fun, productive, and organic gardening experiences you will ever have. A garden that is enjoyable, weed-free, productive, and so very easy to achieve. Hi, I'm Lynn Gillespie, organic farmer and creator of the Abundance Garden Course. Today we are going to focus on the high performance garden characteristics number one, which is harmony with nature. Today we are also going to learn about a very special beneficial insect, the ladybug. Not only are they cute, but they're useful too. The first characteristic of a high performance garden is to be in harmony with nature. And to use chemicals on your food is not very harmonious but sometimes you get pests and need a way to get rid of them so they don't destroy your crop. One way is to release predator insects or beneficial insects as they are also called to eat the bad bugs. We do this in our gardens with several species of predators. The ladybug or the ladybird beetle is one of the best predators of aphids and other soft bodied pests that can plague the garden. We use ladybugs as part of our beneficial insect program along with lacewing, nematodes, parasitic wasps, spider mite predators, and praying mantis. When we use the beneficial insects to patrol our garden, we don't need any chemicals and we save a lot of time by not having to spray. Okay, here I am with my box of ladybugs. They came in the mail. They got these nice holes in it so that the ladybugs can breathe and the ladybugs come in a pouch. We happen to order uh, a half a gallon, so this is 40,000 ladybugs in here. You probably won't need quite this many in your garden, but um, we have uh, 9,000 square feet to deal with, so we like to have them everywhere. So if you take a look, look at them. So the females are the bigger ones, the males are the little bit smaller ones. And there are like 5,000 species of ladybugs worldwide, and there's about 500 different species here in the United States. Oh yeah, they're starting to fly, taking off, looking for bugs. Um, ladybugs typically come in orange and red with the black spots, but they also can come in yellow and pink and gray and black and brown, and they can come with or without spots, so you may not be able to recognize them right away. Um, ladybugs do not eat plants, but they will eat aphids. They like scale and alfalfa weevils, army worms, asparagus beetle larvae, bean beetle larvae, Mexican beetle larvae, thrips, Colorado potato beetle larvae, leaf hoppers, mites, caterpillar eggs, mealybugs, white flies, and many other soft bodied insects and eggs that live in the foliage. So these things are amazing. They are just eating machines. Um, a ladybug will typically eat about 400 aphids from the larvae stage through the pupating stage to the adult stage. And then it'll eat another 300 aphids before it starts laying its eggs. It will eat 3 to 10 aphids for each egg that it lays. And over the lifetime of one ladybug, it can eat up to 5,000 aphids. Isn't that amazing? So the life cycle for these little guys, it has, uh, there's four steps to it. One is the egg, which are bright yellow little eggs that are on the underside of leaves. The next is the larvae stage, which look like little baby alligators. They're so cool looking. They're gray with uh, orange spots on the side. Um, and they're about, oh, a quarter inch long or so. Um, and then next they pupate. So they'll actually, the larvae will go and it'll attach itself to a leaf and it'll turn into a, a little kind of hard-shelled pupa and then out of that will hatch the adult uh, beetle. So to keep the ladybugs around your garden you can plant some flowers because the adults like to eat pollen and the flowers that they like are fennel and dill and cilantro, caraway, angelica, tansy, wild carrots, yarrow, cosmos, coreopsis, scented geraniums, sunflowers, and dandelions. 
And they can survive on the pollen, but they need the bugs for the egg production. Um, ladybugs, they are sensitive to uh, pesticides. So you don't want to have any pesticides at all, whether it's even organic or not. You don't want any pesticides in your gardens. Um, and so ladybugs are not poisonous to us. They don't bite us. Um, but they are toxic to some animals. They have a uh, kind of a foul odor that they give off when they get attacked. Ladybugs live in your garden until it gets cold and then they'll go hibernate under leaves and in crevices. Some people even report them as being in their house and in the walls and stuff. But that would be pretty awesome, I think. Um, Ladybugs can be eaten by other critters. They're eaten by birds and frogs and dragonflies, assassin bugs, and even ants will eat them. If you're wanting to release ladybugs in your yard, the first thing you want to do is, is patrol your yard and your garden. And as soon as you see some aphids, it's time to get the ladybugs. This is usually early spring when the weather hits around 70 degrees. And you're going to want to release them every two weeks for three consecutive periods. So you're going to release them on week one, week three, and week five. And you can actually store these little boogers in the uh, refrigerator for up to two weeks, as long as you keep some moisture on the bag so that they don't get too dehydrated. Um, when you go to release your ladybugs, you want to get about two ladybugs for every square foot of area. So you not only do you want to do your garden, but you want to go ahead and do probably your whole yard. So figure out the square footage of your, your whole yard, multiply by two, and that's about how many ladybugs that you would like to, that you want to order. So we use ladybugs for two different purposes. Um, we. We use ladybugs for um, the control of aphids and soft body bugs. Um, I see very little incidence of the Colorado potato beetle, the bean beetles, any of those. And I think it's because we have so many ladybugs in the vicinity that the other beetles just don't get a hold. Um, the other reason that we get the ladybugs every year is when we had a retail operation and we were selling bedding plants. People would come with their little children, and the little children would really like the, the tags that we had in all the plants. Well, the problem was is the kids would be pulling up all the tags, and when their parents were ready to check out, the kids would be going out the door with a whole handful of tags, which was fine for the kids to have the tags, but the problem that we ran into is we couldn't tell what the plants were after the tags were gone. For example, tomatoes. If I have a green tomato plant, I can't tell if it's going to have yellow tomatoes or red tomatoes unless the tag is actually in the pot. So what we found out is that if we released the ladybugs the week before we got really busy, we put out little signs that said ladybugs on patrol. And we would tell the little kids when they come in, oh, go find a ladybug. And they would run all over the greenhouse looking for ladybugs and they would forget about our tags. So it was an awesome way for the kids to enjoy the greenhouse and for us to still have our tags. So that was one great benefit of the ladybugs. The best time to release your ladybugs is in the evening. And what you want to do is turn them loose in a place where you've watered so that they can get a little bit of moisture. But when you release them in the evening, they don't fly. And then they'll settle in some place. And you have a better chance of them staying in your yard. Ooh, they're crawling down my back. <laughs> oh, and up my ear. <laughs> ladybugs are inexpensive, helpful, and fun to have in the garden. So I encourage you to order some ladybugs when the time is just right, when you just start to see some aphids, and plan to plant some flowers for them. Want access to more videos like this? Click the link in the description below this video to join the High Performance Garden Community for free. Community members receive weekly High Performance Garden video trainings, articles, and trade secrets delivered directly to your inbox. Do you know anyone else who is frustrated and struggling with their garden? Share this video so they can begin to transform their garden into a high performance garden too. They'll thank you later.
If you want to transform your garden into a high-performance garden in one season, you can enroll in the Abundance Garden course, the only gardening course where you can garden step-by-step -step with your gardening coach. Click the link in the description below this video to learn more about the Abundance Garden course. If you have a topic you would like us to make a video about, please send us an email. Or if you have a gardening question, you can also email us at thelivingfarm at tds.net. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. May your garden be easy, fun, productive, and always organic.